Hi everybody, Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. With me today, I've got Stephen Morgan, and we're going to be talking about how to be fit for business. Um, now, um, Stephen uh, is a personal trainer, um, and he's going to be talking to us about what we need to be doing either at a, a company level or as an individual level about what we need to be doing about making sure that we're fit to 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 to, to, to work. Yep. So before we dive in, Steve, where can people find you? Uh, so you can find me on all social medias. Handles is Morgan Health and Fitness. Uh, and my website is morganhealthandfitness.co.uk. So, yeah, uh, contact me anywhere on there. And okay. I'm happy to get back to you. So, so Steve, um, what what is it that what is it that we can, you know, what, why do we need to be fit for business? Why is that important? Uh, well, fit for business, as in fitness for work is uh, like kind of multi strands you need to be uh, fit to be able to stay in work as in taking less days off work whether that be um fighting chronic illness or chronic um pain basically so lower back pain neck pain anything like that now that can affect obviously big business because you are looking to keep your staff working and keep their output nice and high if they're taking days off obviously you're paying money for nothing effectively so that's one strand of it but then it's also uh, being fit for business to actually be uh, have your mental focus to be able to provide your the best of yourself to actually get more output and more productivity uh, but also um being fit is it gives you discipline it gives you makes things habitual um it, it just it's, it's an all-encompassing for basically being just better at work so, and, yeah. and and so all of those things, I mean, from a from both of the company level and an, an individual level is yeah. is good for us because we don't like being sick and, no, and neither does our employer like us being sick. No, definitely not. But there's, there's so many things we can do that a lot of people just don't realize that could be done just to make a, a small differences. If you make lots of small differences, lots of small changes uh, that can just make you generally fitter, healthier, better outlook on life, more positivity, less anxiousness, less pain. Um, and yeah, just better focus. So what sort of things can we be doing? So uh, like, first of all, I would think about like if you're looking at people with a chronic pain, so neck pain back pain comes down to posture a lot and we you've probably heard a lot of people talk about the way you sit at a desk if you're a desk bound job yeah posture you just changed it then perfect uh is it's very important because if you are sat at a desk for a very long period of time we have things what's called adaptive shortening of the muscles so things like hamstrings when we're sat down for long periods of time uh, our hamstrings get shortened in that position because the legs are bent now that has a knock-on effect to your lower back basically because the hamstrings attach at the pelvis pull everything forward and you literally get lower back pain if your hamstrings get too tight so that's a very simple thing to correct with just generally being a bit fitter and focusing on mobility and stretching so i've got a stand-up desk i'm not standing yep. up at the moment but some but it, i press these buttons here and it basically yep. moves up and sometimes i do meetings standing up yeah uh, i'm a big advocate of standing desks but i'm also would say to people don't stand for too long don't mm. sit for too long so we 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 need to find a happy medium of both so when you've got the ones that the desk that can move up and down perfect because yeah you wouldn't really want to stand for more than an hour and then you don't want to sit down for more than an hour so if you can change it then that's brilliant because you're not letting your body get used to those shortened positions of the muscles so that's like one thing that i would say is very prevalent for people with lower back lower back issues if people are having time off because when you get lower back pain it is quite debilitating because you just can't get comfortable but it also has a knock-on effect for everything else because if you can't get comfortable in pain you're then going to not be able to sleep very well if you don't sleep very well you don't recover stress levels go up cortisol is released even more and it just has a negative downward spiral effect so it's it's very important to try and address and it can be sorted with very simple exercises very simple stretches and like you say maybe thinking about the desk being standing sitting occasion using a swiss ball a bit of variety is the spice of life so sitting on a swiss ball rather than a chair or something like that yep can help um for a number of reasons because it gets you having to fire your core 
basically. So right. when I say core is, is the core is stabilizing yeah. your spine. So uh, if you can work those muscles more and actually engage them and be in the correct posture that we should be or our body wants to be, then you're not going to get bad habits, the adaptive shortening and thus reduce pain okay. in, in most cases. OK. And um, what else? What else can we be doing? So it's also a lot of problems with neck. Um, so posture where we're looking at phones and tablets or not having the screens in the right place in this kind of position here for long periods of time, our, our head weighs a lot and our neck muscles, basically, if they aren't working as they should do, you get pulled into that position, you get that hump on the back getting developed on the top of your neck and that can cause one pain. So you'd be off with that, but it also can um, make you basically lose focus because you're thinking about that pain the whole time and it can give you migraines stress headaches all that kind of stuff so yeah posture is a very very big thing so so in terms of we now have a um a, we, we now know that we need to sit in a particular way and, and we need to look at our posture yeah. what else can we be doing around our fitness for for, for work and for business so first of all, with, with the posture, um, you would need some corrective exercises for most people as well to get those muscles that we need developed and actually keeping you in position. So um, yes, basically sat here upright straight, I'm supported, my back, but my neck isn't. So you need to do some corrective exercises, especially if you've got rounded shoulders, internal rotation of your shoulders, and you've got that kyphosis starting which is the upper back rounding so right. correct corrective exercise movement mobility that kind of stuff needs to be done uh, and so what what also can we you know in terms of turning up on on the day what uh, to, to work what can we do to make sure that our fitness is 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 the optimum so when we're turning up to work we are the optimum that we can be yep so following a uh, a good training program now okay. there is there is no right or wrong and what's a good training program mean so that's the million dollar question as in it's what's right for you because a training program needs to be individualistic as in it needs to be tailored to the individual because every, although we are mechanically the same we all have differences so yeah. so a training program should never be one size fits all yeah. So it should be should be changed. So I can't really answer that in the sense of the perfect workout for everyone. But you need a general level of cardiovascular fitness because like That's, Yeah, breathing. exactly breathing. Yeah. So if you if if you have a good respiratory system, good cardiovascular good cardiovascular fitness, or I couldn't get that out, uh, that will enable you to be effectively when you're at work stronger, be able to be like to be able to take more work on because you, you do fatigue during the day at work. Where even when you're sat at a desk, it's mentally draining, but there is the physical as well, being slouching, losing posture. It, you need that level of fitness to keep that mental clarity and that focus and not make silly mistakes and not uh, miss deals. And, and this is about the, the, the fact that we need to be making sure that we, um, um, we have a level of fitness, we have the right diet, so we're eating the right things, yeah. uh, and we're getting enough sleep as well. Yeah, so it, it, it's all encompassing. So you need all of that together. So, but they're, they're just little changes for people mm. at at work can make a big difference. Like for instance, like changing the food that you have in the morning can really help your um, your focus levels for the morning. As in, you need a slow, sustained release of carbohydrate yeah. to basically fuel you, so you can make the correct decisions. If you if you have a sugar drop, basically, you will not focus properly. You will make silly mistakes, and you won't even realize. Obviously, you're making them. Of other, well, you wouldn't make them if you if you knew they were happening. But yeah, it can help actually. Yeah, make you focus on what you're doing and deliver and produce produce the right stuff. And because right one of the because one of the issues isn't there in in terms of our food is that breakfast cereal certainly is in the UK is very sugary. Yeah, yeah, very very sugary. And so what you do is that you 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 eat it, um, and then what you do is you bulk up on it because you know what happens by ten o'clock. Yeah, you you've run out of energy, and so okay. you 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 basically take more and more and more of this sugary stuff to try and get yep. you through the, the morning. Exactly. Uh, like it like to can, let's talk about sugar levels as a like uh, ebbs and flows, because we're trying to keep those ebbs and flows as shallow as possible. 
throughout the day because whenever you take a sugary substance in or a carbohydrate substance in your blood levels will spike and your sugar levels will spike a little bit what happens then is obviously we reduce produce insulin and if you're not diabetic obviously you could produce the insulin and it grabs onto it and pulls you down but we want something which is a slow release carbohydrate which can keep you just gradually coming up and a very gradual pull back down we're not having huge spike huge low and then oh i need to get some sugar again really quickly going to grab that huge spike again and down again because you're you're never on a like the level you're never in your optimal mind and productivity so your output is just going to plummet basically you'll you'll hit let's just say you're in work at nine o'clock you've had your breakfast you'll suddenly go oh at 11 o'clock you just yeah. will have that that downer and then you just won't be productive from 11 till 12. It's or you go to the yeah, um the chocolate machine. machine and you buy buy yeah. chocolate and then the same thing happens at three o'clock in the afternoon exactly yeah so yeah it's a uh, it, again vicious circle you've got to try and sustain and the same thing will happen at lunch if people are making the wrong decisions with food at lunch what they're having whether it's supplied at the office or whether they go out and get something um, I don't know whether you've ever noticed this if you had some food that didn't quite agree with you whether if you have an intolerance or anything like that you then have that huge low you feel sleepy after lunch and again you won't be productive for another piece, period of time so about an hour after food you'll be like Whoa. Yeah, I don't really feel as I'm. Uh, a, the blood I'm, goes all to the stomach to help digest it, well. isn't it? Yeah, and especially if you've had something that is doesn't agree with you. A lot of people have intolerances that they just don't even know about, and they're fueling. It's not having a massive effect on you, but does have an effect. Could it could reduce your productivity down by about five ten percent? And if that's happening day in day out, think how much you're losing business potential, sales you're missing. Um, deadlines you're missing because you're not using those 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 couple of hours post breakfast when you've had that low, post afternoon when you're um, sorry after lunch when you've got that other low, you, you're just not functioning properly, not optimal. When when I used to, I used to work in the city and I used to get love going out to Pret Pret a Manger, yep. Yep. which is a sandwich shop here, um, and they used to do these lovely baguettes, mm -hmm. and they were really nice and crispy, but because it was bread and carbohydrate yeah. yeah you'd eat this lovely because they they make it all fresh yeah and you eat this thing and then you'd go oh. yeah exactly so, that... so i ended up having so I, I just moved to salads and 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 you know chicken salads and stuff like that perfect be, because of the fact that it, i'd love the the baguette but you, you would you'd be sitting there going i got to try and stay awake somehow yeah yeah exactly so and then people turn to coffee or tea yes uh, to or try chocolate. To, or chocolate yeah or something like that to try and go if they're trying to be healthy they're like oh well i'll go for the coffee it'll just give me that little spike it'll give me some mental clarity a bit of focus a bit more productivity uh, and it does work caffeine in moderation is good but yeah if you're having that baguette that is quite especially if it's a white baguette is yeah, um, it's, baguette, yeah. it's quite processed um mm. it is fast releasing carbohydrate but it's also gluten as well in there. So if you are slightly, if you're slightly gluten intolerant, then that will slow you down because your digestive system is having to work even harder to try and break that down. Yes, as you said, blood's going to go to that area, and you're just yeah, you're not going to be productive. So it's making those right choices. So we we've looked at um, ways of um, sorting out in terms of our where where we sit. We've looked at making sure that we're eating and we're sleeping. What can we do in terms of 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 general fitness in terms of um, um, what can we do as individuals or what can we do in the workplace um, to right. actually make sure that we're, we're getting fit. So, for example, I did the um, uh, Couch to 5K app yep. um, back in 2020, mm -hmm. um, which enables you to do 5K in six weeks. I think I had to do it about three times yep. before <laughs> um, before I actually achieved it. Yep. Um, but the fact of the matter is that I, I, that's what I, I decided to do. Um, but what what is it that, that that people could do? Okay, so first of all, if we tackle the business, what they they could do, um, like I'm a big advocate of first of all trying to create some kind of small challenges now mm -hmm. uh, within the workplace. Now I know that's been done before, tried and tested with things like steps, step counting. Mm -hmm. Now it can be done as long as it's uh, in a controlled environment. And, so so and that's where you basically say, right, we're all, you know we're going to do a step challenge or something. Yeah. Yeah, but there's more advanced ways that you can do that. There's apps out there with I've used with companies and people before that you can set up kind of races where mm -hmm. you you plug in, like let's just say you set it up for your team, you were running a team of 10 
in your in your business and you wanted them to go from london to paris you can set that up on the app and they basically can track their activity levels now that can be they can enter distance that they've walked run cycled road whatever they want they could put that in and then it's a team event to try and make it okay so you can get teams yeah. competing, you can get development competing exactly. with sales and exactly yeah so you can create any kind uh, like a a healthy environment within the work as well so some healthy competition but also just spurring everyone to be that little bit fitter so yeah that's a great thing to do it's um i've I found that with great success with a lot of people they've um, embraced it and really done well with it and it's as i said it's all controlled on apps whichever company you use to do it but it's um it's a fantastic way to team build to make people do a little bit more uh and yeah create that healthy competition there's a there's a there's a there's a uh, maybe it's an urban myth yep. but in um california at it, it, um at facebook's campus yep. you get all these people basically walking around talking mm -hmm. and that's because they're all going to do ten thousand steps so they're right. doing meetings on on headphones and they keep walking around the buildings and stuff. okay um brilliant for fitness but are they as switched on to the meeting as they possibly could be? I would argue that you would need to do the fitness outside, trying to make time for it in and around work, not whilst doing meetings. But if it works for you, then they, they, then great. But yeah, that, that so business wise, they can do that kind of stuff. Um, uh, one thing that I would say is like a fantastic thing that is offered by myself and probably other other businesses as well is going into a company and doing a small talk. Okay, so a lot of people don't have access to trainers, um, to coaches, especially not good ones, because there are a lot of people out there that are charlatans or whatever. It's being able to go in and just give them nuggets of information, like small bits and pieces that they can put together. If they take away, they're not going to take away everything, but just a small talk to people can sometimes open their eyes and realize, oh, they could be doing something slightly better. And you're getting those one percenters better the whole time so 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 i have a i have a story yeah which is i know this is about you but i have a story which which fits which fit, so so i had a i had my gallbladder out when i was right. um 14 years ago <laughs> and the consultant basically said um if you don't lose 10 kilograms you'll um be dead by the time that you're 50. right okay so you had a big why uh yes but the thing yeah. was the thing was at the time I was training for the London to Brighton off road. Right. Good. So I was I was cycling um, fifty miles a week on yep. my mountain bike. So it wasn't like I was sitting at home with my feet up eating McDonald's. Yeah. And that was the difference, which was the fact that there was a number of things that I needed to do to actually lose the weight, and it wasn't necessarily more activity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was about changing the fact that I, I love crunching up cornflakes, but I haven't eaten them now for 14 years. Yeah. I love pork pies, but I, I it's a it's a it's a I, I stopped drinking alcohol. Okay. Yep. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of things that I had to do to basically check small things yep. that I needed to change to basically lose that weight. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still here. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Well done. The that's it's brilliant that you've managed to make that change. Now there's two key things that you hit there, which is basically the food, which I'm encompassing the alcohol as well with, um, that is massive to change. Obviously, that's the biggest thing that you need to change. It's kind a of, pint of beer is 300 calories. Yeah, yeah it's great. And, it's, and there's nothing in there in terms of no. vitamins or anything. So that's you go out and not out, you've, you've had all your calorific value for the, the yeah. day. Yeah, and it's um, effectively poison to your body as well. It, now, I, yeah. I, don't want, I don't want to deem uh, no uh, make, make anything bad as in anything in moderation is good yes but the key thing that you did with your training is which most people don't realize if you just up cardio what cardio is doing is yes making you fit and healthy lungs but it's not going to help you lose weight per se long term because you're not building muscle tissue you will lose muscle tissue if you lose muscle tissue that's the live tissue that you want that is what burns calories all day every day so that's where weight training comes in as well. Now it can be hit style training, weight lifting, postural correction, all that kind of stuff. As long as you are building that live tissue, that's how you lose weight. So you need a bit of both, mm. but you need weight training as well, not just cardio. Mm. And and I, I think that was the it, the, the thing that always that 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 scared me was the fact that there I was, uh, and I, I happen to to carry weight across the, the my torso. It's a it's a particular yep. type of um, 
uh, person that does it. I don't put it on anywhere else. It's just, yep. just across here. Yep. Um, and, but the fact that I was actually training, um, and I'd done I'd, I'd done a booper um, um, uh, thing where they put all the electrodes on you, mm -hmm. and they said you you've got the the cardiovascular of a middle distance runner. Um, and then you basically, when you get opened up and they say, actually, no, you're going to die in five years. Right. Yeah, it's pretty serious. But it of course, it's given me a goal. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. I mean, like that. anything in life, I think if you've got a big why for something and why you have to do it, uh, you're obviously going to go after it that much harder, that much mm. better, that much more uh, focused, and you're going to make it happen. It's like yeah, he, he probably made it up, and and he just says, yeah, yeah, just... Body, you know, and because he knows he's, if he sends us, he's I cut you open. Now I'm going to send you on your way, but now you're motivated to lose the weight. Yeah, yeah. but uh, if it worked, perfect. It, it did, yes. Yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah, I uh, that kind of training, but yeah, the fitness for yourself um, does need to be specific for the person, the individual, and the goal that they're looking to achieve. But if it's fitness for for general business, you need a good balance of everything. So you need that cardiovascular fitness, the endurance, but you also need those, uh, the strength, the muscle, the posture. Because one, one thing I'll just touch on, and with business, um, like confidence and posture. Could you think of walking into a meeting and someone comes in, if it's a face-to-face -face meeting, and someone comes in and goes, oh, hi, and they're trying to make a sale to you. What's that going to project, body image, straight away? You've got to sit up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no confidence. If you come into the thing, now I'm trying to sell you something, Tim, and I come in like that, you're going to go, well, this guy's got no confidence in himself. Has he got confidence in the product he's trying to sell me as well? Mm -hmm. uh, but if I walked in, not an arrogant, like standing up, but like just a, a normal posture, come in, greet you normally, but body image projects confidence. So if I'm confident in myself, then I'm going to be confident in what I'm selling as well. Body image projects confidence. That's yeah, as it as in yeah, body, body posture. So I probably should say as in yeah, the image that you are wanting to portray, you need to yeah, show it, show it off as in. But be yeah, be good posture. Steve, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us. It's a fantastic journey through the need for for, for for to be fit for business. Where can people find you? Uh, so yeah, please look me up on. Um, uh, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, uh, Steve Morgan or Morgan Health and Fitness is my handle for all of my socials. Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much for coming in. No worries.